Hey, this is Ben from techlockdown.com, and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to block apps on an iPhone, whether you're an adult doing app blocking for yourself or you're a parent managing a child's iPhone or iPad. I'm gonna cover a wide range of topics in this video. Uh, for example, how you completely block a specific app, how you block categories of apps, how you schedule when apps can be used, how you set time limits for how long an app can be used, how you restrict apps that can be accessed uh, within the App Store, but also the version that can be accessed in Safari. We'll look into uh, techniques for preventing app blocking from being bypassed. We recommend combining several of these app blocking layers together for the most effective and hard to bypass app blocking approach. Check out our iPhone app blocking guide on techlockdown.com for up-to-date information on how to properly do this on an iPhone. The first area I wanna focus on is how do you prevent some apps from being added to a device in the first place? So if you wanna restrict VPNs and proxies that get around content filtering, you would wanna prevent all VPNs and proxy apps from being downloaded from the App Store. If you're setting up a child's device, the best way to do this is to enable the ask to buy feature using managed screen time. So this means that your child's iPhone or iPad needs to be part of your Apple family group. And if they try to download a new app from the app store, you should get a notification on your parents, iPhone, iPad, or a Mac that prompts you to allow or deny the request. And this tends to be the best experience for how you would restrict a child from adding apps that you haven't had a chance to take a look at yet. If you don't want to use Apple Family to restrict apps, the next best approach would be to use screen time on your child's device to set an age rating for apps that are allowed on the device. And what you would do is figure out what app you're trying to block. So if it's a VPN or proxy app, the age rating for those tends to be 17 plus, or if you're trying to block privacy web browsers, those tend to also be 17 plus, and you would set the age rating of allowed apps to below that threshold. If you wanna still use some apps that are rated 17 plus on your child's device, then you probably can't use this approach, and instead what you'll have to do is disable the app store entirely so that you have to manually pick up your child's device re-enable the app store and then download the app they want to access. This is a little bit tedious, but it's really the only workaround at this point if you can't use those other two options. If you're trying to block apps that depend on the internet to function properly, which is the majority of apps that are problematic that you're probably trying to restrict, you can also use a DNS content policy, which we'll talk about later on. And then this could be an alternative approach to using screen time to restrict apps on a child's device. Now, if you're an adult who's self-restricting access to apps, you can try using a similar screen time app restriction approach for yourself, but you would just have someone else set your screen time pin. Unfortunately, it's not possible to reliably enforce screen time on an adult's device like you can on a child's iPhone. So we don't recommend it in cases where you really need to restrict access to apps. A more reliable approach for adults is to set up supervised mode on your own iPhone or iPad and then use that to set app restrictions that are much harder to bypass. This lets you use an Apple config generator like the one that we have at Tech Lockdown to set up either an allow list or a block list app restriction approach. You can set an allow list of approved apps and anything that's not on that list will be blocked from being downloaded from the App Store or opened on the device. So it's a really comprehensive approach if you wanna completely restrict all apps in the App Store without disabling the App Store completely. You can also turn on the profile locking feature, which if you're self-managing your own app restrictions, makes it so that it's a little bit harder for you to just add an approved app to this allow list. You'll have to do something like enter a thousand characters of random text before you're allowed to add a new app to the allow list. You could also get an accountability partner to manage this list for you. And then it's a little bit harder for you to compulsively get around app restrictions. The next area I wanna focus on is how to restrict apps that can also be accessed in Safari or Google Chrome. So for example, you can download the YouTube app from the App Store, but you can also just visit youtube.com in the browser. So if you're trying to block lots of apps, you also need to account for the, the web version of that app and restrict that also. The best way to do this is to use a DNS content policy to block 
the websites and domains related to specific apps so that both the app downloaded from the app store won't work properly if it exists on the device, but you also can't just open up Safari and use the app in the browser. If you're using Tech Lockdown's DNS content policy, you can create a new rule and then use the app selector to choose the apps where you want to disable both the App Store version and then the version that's accessed in the web browser. The next area I want to focus on is how do you schedule access to apps? So there might be some apps that you don't want to always have access to or you don't want a child to always have access to, but it's okay for them to use it some of the time. There are two ways that I'd recommend doing this, whether it's a, a child's device or an adult's device. The first is you can use the DNS content policy approach that I mentioned before to add a schedule to the app block rule that you've set up, or you can set a recurring schedule for when certain apps can be accessed. Screen time also has a downtime feature that lets you specify the app categories or specific apps that are restricted on a schedule. And a lot of parents will use this to limit which apps can be used during school hours or at night when maybe there's less supervision for a child. Adults can also use this approach, but as I said previously, it's not possible for an adult to 100% prevent themselves from getting around screen time. Now, if you're more focused on reducing screen time and you care more about limiting how much time you or a child can spend in an app, there's a few techniques you can use, but there's varying levels of accuracy when it comes to app time limit tracking. So Screen Time has an app time limit feature where you can choose a category or specific apps that have a, a specific time limit associated with them. If you're an adult that's self-managing your own device, it's really easy to override this time limit, unfortunately, but on a child's device, it tends to work pretty well. What might get lost in the time limit data is whether or not a person is accessing the version of that app in Safari, and then screen time may not pick up on that app time limit in that case. So to really make app time limits effective, you also need to include Safari in that time limit, or you need to block the version of that app that can be accessed in Safari using screen time's app block list. So just to give you an example, if you wanted to limit the time that uh, a child can spend on YouTube, you would block youtube.com so that the app has to be used. And then you would set the app time limit for the YouTube app, and that would hopefully close down this loophole where a child could just access YouTube in Safari to get around the app time limit. So in this section, I just want to address some frequently asked questions that I see pretty often on Tech Lockdown. The first one is, why don't we just recommend that you download an app blocker from the App Store? The issue is, is that screen time tends to cover most use cases when it comes to app blocking. I don't really see a good reason to add a, a third party app from the app store to a child's device. And if you're talking about an adult's device, the problem with these apps is that they all depend on screen time permissions to work properly. And a, an adult can easily override those permissions by using their face ID to revoke that app's use of screen time. So basically, from a parental control perspective, screen time in Apple Family kind of already has all the batteries included. And if you're talking about an adult, then a third-party app is too easy to get around and disable. So that's why we don't recommend downloading app blockers from the App Store. Another question we get typically from people that are trying to prevent uh, like VPNs, DNS settings, or screen time permissions from being bypassed is how can you restrict access to the settings app? Uh, the first thing is, is you may not need to actually restrict the settings app if you're trying to protect a VPN or DNS settings from being uh, removed. You can use supervised mode to add settings that can't be disabled so that you wouldn't have to actually block the settings app completely. The other thing is that it's really risky to block the settings app because there's lots of reasons that you need to go into iOS settings to make changes. If you still want to block the settings app entirely, you can't really do it using the app blocking approaches I've discussed previously. You have to use a workaround where you use Apple shortcuts to trigger an automation that simulates the settings app from being blocked. So this is a little bit out of scope for this video, and I'll link a guide below that walks you through exactly how to do that.
Another common question is how to block VPN and proxy apps specifically. And I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier when I was talking about blocking apps based on age rating and also using the allow list uh, blocking approach with uh, supervised mode on an adult's device. Uh, so in both those cases, you can block you know, the millions of VPN apps um, pretty quickly. But there's also another way to block VPN apps on an iPhone, and it involves the use of supervised mode. You can use an Apple config generator to turn on a restriction that prevents new VPN apps from, from working properly. So once you do this, even if you download a VPN app from the App Store and open it on the device, it won't have the permission required for that app to establish a VPN connection, which effectively blocks all of the unapproved VPN apps and only lets you use the one that you've already set up on your device. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about how to block apps on an iPhone, please leave a comment below. Also check out techlockdown.com for more free guides and advice.